How are you, Mike? I'm fine, Martin. Yeah. Um, sorry not to be with you in person, but we're observing the appropriate uh, social distancing and doing this by several well. miles this time. Yeah, that's right. But uh, never mind. Never mind. So thoughts about this Sunday's gospel. We're continuing Matthew 25. Um, where have we got to and what's it about? Yeah, so we've got to the parable of the talents, which is Matthew 25. Um, I think it's 13 to um, th something like 14 to 30. Yeah, 14 Matthew to 30. 25. Yeah, yeah 14 to 30. And um, this is about the parable of the talents, where basically uh, three different people are given uh, a, a talent each. And um, one of them goes and makes 10 talents. One of them goes and makes five talents more. And the other one just hides it and uh, doesn't invest it at all. And uh, you hear the response of the, uh, the, the man who gave them the money, uh, two of whom he's delighted with, the first and the second, and the third of whom he is not at all delighted with uh, and is very angry with. So, um, and, and it comes between two other uh, parables of Jesus, one that we talked about last week, which was the parable of the wise and the foolish um, bridesmaids or virgins, mm -hmm. and uh, the next one, which is the parable of the sheep and the goats, both of which are about judgment. So one might anticipate that this is also Jesus talking about some element of judgment here. Um, so, so one or two commentators say very interestingly that actually the first two who go and make money for the, the, the landowner are actually um, colluding with an exploitative rich landowner. And the third one resists and is vilified as a result, which is a rather strange way of looking at the parable, because if that's true and the third one is the hero, then why isn't he identified as the hero in the parable? And, and, it, and if he did it out of fear, he hid the money out of fear, we're told, you know, because he knew that the wrath of the, uh, the man sending him might come down on him, then that's not really heroic. So I'm unconvinced by that very that's perverse a, reading. That's a common commentator trying to say something different so he can get published. Yeah, absolutely. So much more likely that the first one, I've, I've, I've refused to even mention their names as a consequence to the commentators. <laughs> so much more likely that the first two are utilising the gift. And, and, and some people say, well, talent, you know, I mean, talent was 15 years of wages. So this is big money we're talking here to be given a talent, big money. Um, I, I, and some commentators go down the route of saying, well, the talent, it could be an analogy for all sorts of uh, abilities or skills that we've got. Uh, one of the most um, entertaining ones I heard of was uh, some of our talents are like our senses, like our eyes and our ears and, and so on. So that, you know, you're, you can use your eyes either to, to look softly on another with compassion and praising and appreciatively and delightfully, or you can look with uh, mean eyes and squint and be cynical out of a, a, a fear of being taken for a ride or something. And similarly with other senses. Um, and, and, and I can see kind of like the point of that, but, but this is actually about money, this parable. <laughs> you know, talents is money, and it's about investment and getting an investment back. And it seems to me that it's about um, how we are handling our money in the here and now with a view to it being invested in matters to do with the kingdom of God. And actually, in ways that also show that money doesn't have any lasting significance come the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing with um, our money in the here and now, utilising it in service to, in our relationship with God, just like our prayer, just like our worship, our money, how are we utilising that to maximise um, the um, kind of like contribution we're making to the kingdom and to our life with our Lord, because it's interesting if you look at the uh, the two who actually um, make um, some money for the master, they are liberated into the joy of their master, liberated. So what's exciting about this is that the master gets a return on his investment and his, his investment is in us, if you see what I mean. Yeah, yeah. So money has no purpose on the last day. The time for using it is here and now. Are we investing it? Are we utilising it in the services of the kingdom here and now so that we can be those for whom our, our master says, well done, good and faithful servant. You right. have been put in charge of a little, take charge of really quite a lot. So one of the one of the kind of edginesses of this parable for me is um, how are we handling our money 
in a way that shows we're using it for the here and now and understanding it, its primary significance is for us to utilize it in God's purposes. And that actually what, what, what the master is furious about with the last one is that he didn't utilize it, it for those purposes at all, but out of uh, fear and cowardice refused to do so which is both a poor reading of the master and the master's purposes and a poor use of the, the gift of money. What do you say? Okay, well, so, so you're, you're being much more concrete than I was thinking. So I, I need to have a little think about that, uh, particularly since the, Ma Matthew doesn't, doesn't deal with money much in the mm. way that Luke does. So I need, uh, I need to have a think about that. I was, I, I was thinking more in terms of, uh, virtues or skills or talents in that sense <clears throat> but uh, I uh, just start with thinking that you know, we're aware that people love to divide the world into two so you know pe people are in, in either one thing or another so yeah, yeah they're either they're either doers or they're watchers or they're glass half empty people or glass half full people and mm -hmm. Thomas Aquinas uh, divided the world into the magnanimous and the pusillanimous um, so <laughs> easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> I practiced. <laughs> um, so uh, the magnanimous are those with, and it means big, large spirit, large spirited. Uh, the pusillanimous, small, very small spirit, spirited. In fact, the Latin is uh, is a very pusilli pusilis means very small, <clears throat> and. And 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 he actually applies it to this to this uh, parable, um, and he's he's saying the magnanimous uh, it, it are those who uh, use their talents uh, not for their own glory, but for the glory of God, which is what you're saying using money for, and and so there's a there's a you know as there was in the 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 the, the wise and foolish virgins there is a, an as eschatological frame to this this is about um uh being prepared and working for the coming of christ, towards the coming of christ yeah. yeah and and so so using your talents in that way and, and actually uh in, in in the parable the first one gets five the second one gets two the third one gets one the five and the two use them well and they are using them, uh, and Aquinas would say, not for their own glory, vainglory, pride undermines this, ambition undermines this. They're, they're using them for the glory of God. Um, the pusillanimous one, the one who gets one and decides to just dig a hole and bury it, is the one who is small spirited. And, and Aquinas sees, you know, not half the world, but you know, plenty of people being small spirited and small spirited in terms of the gifts that God has given them and in terms of faith. And so uh, that they, they could be small spirited in the in the sense that they uh, they are fear of they fear failure. Um, they're small spirited in the sense that they may lack confidence. They're small spirited in the sense that they may just be lazy and uh, the. The interesting thing to me is that that Th Thomas is fairly. Um, whilst we 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 have a lot of sympathy with one another when we lack confidence, so we try and build each other up. Um, uh, uh, Thomas is is fairly scathing. I mean that that's a sin. Lacking confidence is a sin. If God has given you gifts, you need to have confidence in those gifts. Um, mm. If you're afraid of failure, that's a sin. You need to get on and use them, whatever happens. And laziness, of course, is a sin. We all recognise that. Um, so, so there's something for me. I mean, you talk about edginess. There's something for me that's edgy about um, actually. You know, do do I tolerate? You know, in myself, do I tolerate my own lack of confidence? Am I too sympathetic to my own lack of confidence? Uh, and I'm 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 struck. Uh, uh, this is a word that's been circling around for a while. Um, and in in the work that Stephen Cottrell's doing on the, the the vision for the for the emerging vision for the Church of England, one of the this this word has come up, which is about being bold. Mm. And I'm struck that you know what what the, the the first two of these characters in the parable did was they were bold in their 
in their use. They, they, they were confident that they could do something well with this. And the third one, the pusillanimous one, um, had no confidence, was terrified he was going to lose it, um, and so just held on to it, buried it. Uh, mm. So I, I think there's something there that, you know, certainly I feel, a challenge to not, ex not be quite so tolerant with my own, oh, I'm not sure it's, you know, maybe it's not going to work, maybe we won't have a go at this. But to yeah. say, if God has given us these gifts, this sense of call, this sense of um, motivation, then let's get on with it. Let's see what happens. Let's get on with it. Mm. So, uh, as you speak, I'm, I'm thinking of an example a, a vicar shared with me of a, a nursing home he went to. And um, in that home, there were a number of people he, he met there who were kind of like spent quite a lot of their time moaning about their various um, uh, ailments and, and difficulties. And there was one outstanding uh, contrast to that in a woman called Ruth, who was 91 who was learning Russian <laughs> in order to actually be able to speak to the isolated Russian lady who lived down the corridor with her <laughs> and perhaps even to talk about Jesus with her. Talk about a different focus and that kind of boldness too. Yeah, yeah. so we need to encourage one another in being confident and bold. Amen, brother. Thank you. Thank you very much.